Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you the glory today for who you are and what you're doing on the earth. Lord, you have a great plan. And you've included us in that plan, Lord. In fact, we have such a priority position, we're almost embarrassed. You've lifted us to such a high place in Christ <laughs> that sometimes we have a hard time believing it. So I pray today we would recognize who we are and who Christ is in us and that you have given us the earth, Lord, as our possession. We thank you in the name of Jesus for this study. Bless us and bless the business people uh, as they take authority over their area of authority and kingdom on this earth in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, we're continuing our last, actually this is the last of a four-part series on um, taking your business to the next level. And last week we looked on team building, uh, the characteristics of building a good team. Um, today we're looking at something a little unique. It's going to be a larger picture because your worldview affects how you see yourself, how you view this world. Yeah. Are we victims in this world? Are victors. victors? We're not victims. First of all, uh, the devil doesn't own this earth. He's a thief and a liar and took it by subterfuge in the garden. That was the first Adam's fall. But you know, the last Adam restored. Say restored. restored. The last Adam restored everything that was stolen. Amen? Yeah. Hi, Judy. Everything that was stolen was restored. How many have been restored a little bit in your own life? Hello. God is good at restoration. I shared the ship story with a guy yesterday. He was a sailor. I was over at Starbucks at... Uh, Oh, I went to Starbucks. How, how unusual. Uh, I was at Starbucks over on, on Bruce B. Downs, and this guy he had an admiral hat, and he'd come in, and, and uh, he sees me over there once in a while. He's a, kind of an interesting guy, very in intelligent. Just wrote a book, put it on Amazon on, on the Civil War and how Naval was using the Civil War and everything. I shared the ship story of our ship out in, uh, oh, I don't think that's us. Somebody's next door. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Uh, somebody was knocking on the wall, but that has nothing to do with us here. <laughs> Nobody's locked out. And how God took that ship called the Lock Knot, and we made it a homeless shelter in, in San Francisco for the homeless. We restored the ship. It was a 285-foot World War II troop carrier. And uh, uh, the ship ended up being named Restoration. <laughs> it was out of the Second World War. Only made one trip to Japan with 600 and some troops on board. And... Uh, Hello, okay. <laughs> Is that you, David, that's making all that noise out there? Yeah, man. Oh, okay, all right. We, we, th we, thought somebody was, we thought somebody was knocking the wall down out there, all right. But anyway, God is a restorer. God restores everything the enemy has taken. In fact, God restores it better than it was before. It, it's, it's like the enemy has to repay fourfold or sevenfold or how many fold you believe. And so I, I really believe that we live in a great day of restoration. I believe the earth is being restored. Um, you see, the kingdom authority on the earth is not taken by violence. Now, violent people, it says you enter the kingdom by violence, and that means you've got to die to the flesh. If you want to be under the rulership of Jesus, you've got to die to the flesh. And we're going to see that in the study. But if you want, if you want to take the earth the way I believe the earth is going to be taken by kingdom people is economically. There's going to be an economic restoration coming through kingdom businesses where the world is going to look to us and say, how in the world did you do this? How did you do it? Just a little illustration, if I can get a little personal. My son's 10 years old, and he loves games. And I told him, I told him several years ago, Chris, you are a game developer. You, your mind works so incredibly about these games online, and he's so creative. So the other day we were meeting over here with somebody that does some investments and, uh, and owns a gaming company. So Chris absolutely outlined this whole game he's going to present now to Christopher, because Christopher said, if you have any ideas for games, I mean, right down to the detail, I, he shared this with me last night, my 10-year-old boy. I pray over him every night when I put him to bed. And I say, I say, kingdom come will be done in my son's life and mind. And, and so we're going to make him a partner with Chris on this game. You know, he may end up being a 10-year-old millionaire. We'll go ahead and put it in the bank, you know, so he can get a 
house and the car and college education, have all that in advance. This is the way kingdom ought to be working. Amen? Amen. Am I weird here? No. It's not impossible. I'm flying back from Nigeria and I look on the airplane on the internet because um, Jeffrey and I missed a flight on the way over. They flew us back first class. They gave us over a $5,000 ticket from Lagos, Nigeria to Houston, right. Texas. We had these reclining beds and, and our own private internet and electrical hookups next to our seat in this beautiful Boeing, you know. Now, now this is the way Kingdom Kids ought to fly. I couldn't afford to fly that way, but God gave us the ticket. They came and got us from the back of the cattle car, if you know what I'm talking about. And they said, uh, Mr. Brandt, uh, would you like to sit in first class? I said, are you kidding? I mean... We ate till we were sick. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it was first class. Now, what am I saying? I say, well, you say, why do you say this? You see, under kingdom, Solomon became the richest man that ever lived. Yes. Do you know that silver lost its value in Solomon's day? You know why? Because Solomon owned it all on the earth. When you own something, it has no exchange value. When you owned everything, all the silver on the earth, he had gold, solid gold, armor for his army. <laughs> he didn't know what to do with all his gold. He had gold chariots. I mean, you say one man owned all that wealth, yeah. Now I believe we're coming into a day, you say, Jerry, you have an awful optimistic view of the world. Yes, I do. Because it's been possessed by the blood of Jesus. The heavens are the heavens of, of the Lord, it says, but the earth is given to the sons of men. See, the earth is my possession, earth is my possession. Given, to me given to me by Jesus Christ. By Jesus now I must go possess it. Now I must Amen? That's done by faith, as we're going to see. Now, so I'm kind of setting up an overview here. Just for those that joined us online here, we have Kingdom Business, uh, Kingdom Biz Community Blog Spot, which I put new blogs on there almost every week. And there are articles, different things about what we believe, what we're practicing mm -hmm. in our business, in our kingdom business and uh, the, we also have a kingdom business network a full-time 24 7 radio network online for businesses judy's a part of that and i tell you I'm, I'm excited now the foundations for kingdom economy what are the foundations in the bible for kingdom economy the principles that guide kingdom economy god number one is establishing something called mountains of the lord he's establishing mountains of the lord i believe we are one of those mountains. By the way, if you haven't looked into the sevenfold uh, 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 mount, seven mountain strategy, that's something else to consider. Mm -hmm. You know, the seven mountains of influence that Bill Bright and Lauren Cunningham got a vision of in 1976, yeah. flying into Dallas, Texas for a conference. Yeah. Both of them had the same vision of this. And it was the church taking the seven mountains of influence back yes. from the world. Media, yes. education, yes. arts, and sciences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello. And I believe it's happening today. Now, one of the things we're most behind on is the media. And I, I, I just believe the whole movie, in, movie industry is going to experience a revival. I, I really am praying that. A lot of demonic stuff comes out of there. They just, their agenda is not Christ-like. But there are some good Christian movies that have recently come out. This little Baptist church up in Georgia is producing some phenomenal yeah. movies. Facing the Giant and some others that are just really powerful movies. So God's going to establish mountains of the Lord. These are spiritual Zions, places of blessing and glory. They're also places of economic wealth. You have to also realize David's kingdom was enormously wealthy. In fact, when David gave 10,000 talents of gold... To the temple fund all the princes of israel came in and they started giving and david finally had to say stop we have more than enough wouldn't you love your pastor to get up sunday morning and say stop giving church we have so much money in our account that we can no longer take any more funds right now our, in fact our treasure can't keep up with it wouldn't that be a nice problem Amen. now I believe there are coming self-contained economic systems that don't depend on Babylon. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe we're going to see ecosystem communities built around organic farming and housing where there's not only going to be enough food for that in-state community, but there's going to be distribution centers there for the world. 
I really believe that's coming. I mean, we've talked, Corey and Millie and I, we've, we've talked about it. Other people have come in. Dean has come in now, which is on his way in his scooter. Uh, Dean has a vision of these all across the country. He, he's ready to start one in Colorado. I believe they're farming communities. Corporate has taken over farming, basically. Yeah. I believe it's going to go back to individual ownerships. We're going to have a return to farming. Mm -hmm. And I believe these economic systems, I believe the government is going to be so poor that they won't be able to patrol these. You say, well, everything's regulated and the government, blah, 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 won't let us do this and that. Listen, when things get tough, they're not even going to notice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I believe in the name of Jesus, and I declare over America and over the world, economic communities of wealth mm -hmm. and distribution and resources mm -hmm. where there's more than enough. There's more than enough out there. It just doesn't get distributed properly. There's more than enough. We throw away more food than the world can eat in America. You know, they had an article on TV that America throws away 50% of the food they buy. Absolutely. I, I believe that. I, I believe that. And, you know, that alone would feed the poor of the world. It's a distribution thing. And usually wicked uh, uh, tribal leaders are the ones that control these control. African tribes. By the way, pray for Dr. Osung, our... Uh, Kingdom of Life University leader has gone up in North Nigeria mm -hmm. okay. where if you and I went up there we would not come out alive right. heavily Muslim area terribly dangerous we're believing in the name of Jesus see the gospel when it goes in liberates yes. when the gospel goes into an area of the world it changes it Amen. even changes the way the ground works mm -hmm. because the ground is under a curse came in, in Genesis 1 what's the first thing that got cursed? The ground. What's the first thing Jesus restores? The ground. Remember that uh, Central American community that had a huge restoration revival? They hadn't had rain for three years after the revival, which actually shut down the local jails. And they had no more need for the jails. There was, there was such a revival in that city, and so much of Christ's righteousness was released in that area. And I saw the pictures of the fruits and vegetables that came out of there. They were enormous. They were larger than life. Jerry, this sounds like, maybe to some of you, it sounds like we're in outer space here. But I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is the truth. Mm -hmm. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And God is restoring it. Restoring it. He's restoring you. In fact, I want to say something here. According to Romans 8, are you ready to receive this? Hi, Christina. Are you ready to receive this? I want you to hear this, everybody. Okay, got to listen. The earth can only be restored at the rate that the sons of God receive the revelation of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. true. Amen. <laughs> I, I can prove this. We're going to see yeah. this in Romans 8 in a few minutes. So, what are these self-economic uh, systems? I, I took a picture of a few of these. In fact, I led a guy on, uh, to the Lord on the airplane now to my son's... Um, when I was got to see my son in, in Alaska and when he was in the hospital and we got him out of there. He was near death and uh, just declared over his body for a week and by the end of the week he was walking to the end of the hospital hall and now he's back home um, restoration but this guy showed me a bunch of these pictures that he, his master's degree was in ecosystems for community development he got an earned master's degree and i said well, i got his name and i said i want you to work with us he's you ought to see the pictures he's got of, of small communities like taking a piece of land out here and developing a whole ecosystem within that community that's self-contained, totally self-contained, organic farming. Mm -hmm. See, it's coming back. And uh, people will buy organic products mm -hmm. because people are tired of buying empty food. Mm -hmm. And it's a growing, uh, aren't these beautiful pictures of cities? Artists re rendering of cities that uh, are built around ecosystems. I believe that's a thing of the future. I think this looks like kingdom come will be done. It, it almost looks like the kingdom, doesn't it, come to this earth. And so, what are the principles guiding the economic economy? The promise of God, the promises of God are the basis of kingdom principles. What God says, he will perform. Psalms 2, 7 through 9, I will declare the decree. How do, you, how do you, many of you know when God makes a decree, it's going to happen? Amen. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Who's, who's he talking to here? Jesus. The resurrected Christ who is sitting at the right hand of the Father. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. 
You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. He's talking about the nations that resist. Now, I want you to look at Daniel 2, verse 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. What's the principle here? It's a principle of an increasing kingdom. A part of this increasing kingdom is the return of Jesus Christ to this earth. That's just a part of it. I believe leading up to the return of Christ is going to be a great amount of training in the church on how to reign with Christ. You think Jesus is just going to come to this earth and turn it over? to a bunch of us in this state that it's in right now. We are in a training period. Hello? We are in an equipping period to learn to rule and reign with Christ now so when Jesus comes back, we're ready to reign over cities. You see, men are forever going to possess the earth. You say, no, no, I'm going to die and go to heaven. Not good. Be blessed, huh? God is making a new heaven and a new yeah. earth, and this new earth is where we're going to dwell forever. Yeah. We're, made, we're built for earth. Mm -hmm. And I believe we're going to see a lot, a lot of the restoration of these kingdom principles on the earth in the church prior to the return of Christ. That's why the end time gospel is the gospel of the kingdom. Not the gospel of grace, it's the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of grace is included in the kingdom, of course. The Bible starts with kingdom, dominion, Adam, reigning over all the earth, naming the animals, how about that? The insects right down to the smallest plants, he named it all. That's pretty good intelligence. Wouldn't you think one guy can name everything in the earth? It started with kingdom, Satan moved in. Man lost that dominion. Now it ends with kingdom. Jesus Christ came back to restore that kingdom, and now it's going to end with kingdom. Read the book of the Revelation, the last chapter. We shall reign <laughs> with him. In fact, let me show you this verse. But everyone that sits under this vine, in Micah chapter 4, verses 5 and 7, uh, but everyone shall sit under his vine and under his fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. Won't be any government intrusion, taxes, blah, 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 that one makes us wonder if we're going to have enough. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. For all people walk each in the name of his God, but we will walk in the name of the Lord, our God, forever and ever. Book of Micah. And one more verse. And unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and his peace there shall be no end. Everything else is going to diminish on the earth. The only thing that's going to increase is his kingdom. I keep saying it. You say, Jerry, you sound like a broken record. I'm going to keep saying it. Well. To order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward even evermore. The zeal of the Lord will perform it. Hello? This is not based on men. It's based on the zeal of God. It's based on Psalms 2, the decree of God, and the zeal of God to perform it. I don't know, are we in a pretty good deal here? Is this kingdom thing pretty cool? I think it's pretty cool, don't you, Christy? Christine and Christine? And, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Now, what are the principles that are uh, principles of possessing the kingdom? Well, the only way to possess the kingdom is through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. First of all, you've got to come by faith, receive Jesus Christ. It's theologically, uh, theologically there are two terms used, if, if you want to go a little deeper here, because this is a kingdom course, you know. There's imparted righteousness and imputed righteousness. Imparted righteousness means he imparts to our account the righteousness of Christ. So when you find Jesus as your Savior, the Father declares you righteous at his right hand through Jesus Christ. You receive Christ by faith. You confess with your mouth. Believe in him. Receive him. And you are then imparted 
the righteousness of Christ. So it becomes your righteousness. His righteousness becomes a part of you. So how does God see you? He sees you in the righteousness of Christ, not in your sin, not in your wickedness, not in all the faults you have and all the mistakes you've made. He sees you. De in fact, in your spirit, you are perfect. Once you receive the Holy Spirit, your spirit is perfect. God sees you perfect. Now, the flesh may have a few problems. That's why Paul said, I die daily. <laughs> and we do have to deal with this flesh until we shed this body and get the resurrected body. So we have to deal with this flesh every day. But Paul said, in my flesh dwells no good thing. So the flesh is at enmity with God. But I'm not living in the flesh. I'm living in the spirit. Amen. Amen. I live in a body, but my spirit reigns. But the Holy Spirit reigns in my life daily. That's, that's what it means, okay? So I am crucified with Christ. All right? That's what Paul says in Romans 3 and 3 through 6. I am crucified with Christ. I am buried with Christ. I am risen with Christ. You now Ephesians chapter 1, I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. That's the whole chapter 1 of Ephesians. And because I'm seated with Christ, I now reign with Christ. I reign. He has made us, Revelation 5, a kingdom of kings and priests unto our God. Say, I'm a king. I've been given a kingdom. It starts with your marriage, your family, your home, your children, your business. It's a kingdom. You are to reign over your kingdom. I told Chris, let's call the name of your, I looked it up on the internet, by the way. I said, let's call the name of your gaming company Dominion. So we're naming our gaming company. Don't you like that? Dominion. Dominion Games. And you pray for us because I believe God's going to give us a lot of games for kids that are going to teach kingdom. Now, as Chris said the other day, you can't do it religiously. Hey, look at Lord of the Rings. C.S. Lewis one of the greatest theologians that ever lived wrote Lord of the Rings. It's a theological base. He just didn't call it that so people would look at it and, and get the principle and the morality of it. I, this is what God's going to give us with Dominion Games. I've, I've had this vision for years and finally it's come to reality. We have the man that has a gaming company and what did he say? He spent $25,000 a few weekends ago and developed a whole online game over one weekend with his team. Put a new game on. I'm telling you, games are the thing for kids. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be violence. In fact, the game that Chris uh, is called You Build. And by the way, that name hasn't been taken for a nap. Mm -hmm. You Build. And it's how to build your kingdom and how to defend it. Mm -hmm. is pretty cool? Mm -hmm. Instead of building with blocks like Minecraft and some of those games, you build with reality characters. <laughs> these, are, these are really high-def real characters. It hasn't been done on the Internet yet. We're going to see if Chris can do it. So, I don't know, you know, he's, Jerry, this is way out the outs out there. God's out there. Got to think outside the box. Amen? That's right. And that's why, you know, we've been talking about quantum physics. I got that revelation coming back from uh, my mom's uh, funeral. When I stopped in Houston, I wrote a post. I put a post on our blog spot about quantum physics and had no idea what I was talking about because God told me. He said, the future of energy is in quantum physics. And I said, okay. And, and now we have all these people coming to us that are physicists. You had another one you met this week, right, Judy? Yeah, yeah. Out of the clear blue yeah, yeah. is a phys physicist yeah. dealing with quantum physics. Mm -hmm. You see, God's going to put a quantum physics team together eventually. You watch. And I believe it's a hydrogen atom going around the nucleus that they're going to be able to capture that energy. In fact, I was reading a little bit about it on the Internet. If they're able to slow that atom down just a little bit around the nucleus, it creates so much heat that that will run a car, one, one atom will run a car for an entire month. Mm -hmm. New kinds of energy. Yeah. This is what, see, kingdom's about this stuff. Mm -hmm. The greatest inventions have not been invented, folks. Amen. That's right. right. Right, Inventor Joe? Joe's an inventor. Yeah. That's right. God, you see, okay. Jesus Christ, in Him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That's right. God is going to give creative ideas to kingdom people that are going to transform the way energy is produced, a lot of things. You're probably going to turn me into the authorities if you, if, if you don't know me very well. I sound really off the wall. What, we must learn to hear the voice of the Spirit. We must learn to hear the voice of the Spirit, get revelation. And then we must exercise that revelation by faith. Mm -hmm. It takes faith to step out of this boat. Mm -hmm. And a few people are going to think you're nuts. It's all right. And, and so you need meditation, 
bringing every thought into captivity to Christ. What it says, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is holy, whatsoever is just. Think on these things. I call meditation sanctified imagination. We need sanctified imaginations, creative imaginations. We need that. And then we need to declare it. Once we get a revelation and we're confident it's God's, we declare it. And our declaration, and that's that article you shared with me, Judy, about uh, Cap, Charles Capps yes. and his daughter, who talk about the vibration of sounds and the power of the vibration of sounds. See, nothing's really solid. Whatever you're looking at here is not solid. It's made up of molecules that mm -hmm. go that would make it look solid. Mm -hmm. But sound has a vibration. We, do, we deal with, with uh, MP3 sounds all the time in a radio broadcast. Mm -hmm. So sounds have vibrations, and these vibrations carry authority in the natural world. Mm -hmm. Your declarations, what comes out of your mouth, has life or death. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then manifestation. Now look at this, Romans 8. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption... Into the what? Glorious liberty of the children of God. You okay, Christy? We haven't knocked out of your chair with this teaching yet. She's out there smiling. Listen. Your own deliverance becomes universal. has a universal effect. You say, well, my universe isn't very big. You, you don't know how far it goes. That's right. You might send an email somewhere over, yeah. overseas, oh. Carol, that affects a whole nation by starting a university that's going to win. Tell us about one of, the, one of the directors over there, what just happened in Kenya. One director just multiplied his sphere by operating 40 new campuses. 40 new campuses. That's one right. director in Kenya. Yeah. So is our university growing? I mean, you know, we're, Carol and I are just saying, hello, I mean, this thing is multiplying. See, what about the kingdom? It in increases. 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 The kingdom never stops. Can't be overcome. In fact, it's going to smash and crush mm -hmm. all the other kingdoms. Right. But it depends on the liberation of the children of God in Christ. Yes. This study Ooh. is out there today. I mean, we are having a good time, aren't we? Let's finish up here, okay? <laughs> Daniel said, I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them until the Ancient of Days came and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. And the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. You know when that happened? At the cross. Thank you. A time, Jesus came in the fullness of time, made of the woman, made under the law, and he released on earth his kingdom. His whole message was kingdom. Mark 1, 13. Jesus traveled throughout all of Galilee, preaching the kingdom of God and saying, repent and believe. Mm -hmm. Repentance doesn't mean wail over your sins. Repentance means change your mind means a change of mind. Change your mind about the rulership of Christ on this earth. Come under that rulership. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to lose coming under, into this kingdom. Amen. You just can't lose. It's eternal. It's forever. It's not going to die. That's right. What did he do? He defeated our greatest foe, death. He defeated poverty. He became poor that we may become blessed. He defeated all sickness and disease. He defeated all sin. He defeated all demonic power and strongholds at the cross. The blood of Jesus is so amazing in heaven that it's being celebrated every day in worship. Revelation 5. Now, why aren't we seeing this full manifestation of the kingdom on earth? Well, poor theology. We get a defeated theology. Hang on till Jesus comes. <laughs> well, I'm not hanging on. Jesus said, occupy till I come. Yes, he did. We have faith in the wrong source. The church is looking around for sources. Mm -hmm. To government, to economy. Hey, look to the one who is going to do it all, and that's Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's right. 
In Him are all things. Before Him are all things. He, is, he contains all things, Colossians. And then the timing of God's purpose is holding it back. He's waiting for us yes. to step up mm -hmm. to the plate. Right, Judy? Yep. He's waiting for us. Finally, in closing, Revelation 5.10, He has made us a kingdom of kings and priests unto our God. And we shall reign. Mm -hmm. Wow. Amen. I wish we had time to go in Psalms a little bit. Thou us in, in, in Hebrews, I was reading just before you came in the office. Thou hast made him. Well, let me finish with this. What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you take care of him? You have made him a little lower than the angels, but you have crowned man with glory and honor. And set him over the works of your hands. Amen. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. Amen. Look at your feet. Say, all things are under subjection. He's put all things under our feet. But it has to be through the righteousness of Christ alone, not by our works, not by our effort. Not by my, not, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, how how much more excited could we get about who you are and what you are doing and how this kingdom is being released around the world right now and the revelation that people is get, our, our people is getting all over the world of the kingdom and it's a rising theme that I believe is going to see this world largely restored and transformed before the coming of Christ and then. Your bride is going to be triumphant, reigning already on earth. And when you come back, Jesus, man, it's just going to be a smooth transition to your glory. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.